Fire is a natural part of Oklahoma's landscape. Uh, historical records and uh, work with tree rings suggest that fire occurred in Oklahoma about every three to five years. It was primarily started by Native Americans and has been occurring on this landscape for about the last 10,000 years. For today's landowners, fire is a necessary and required tool to manage prairies, shrublands, and forests. All of Oklahoma's ecosystems evolved with fire and as such require fire to remain healthy. Research has shown that there is no substitute for fire. Fire on the prairie landscape increases the diversity of plants and wildlife. It does this in several ways. One is it increases the amount of seed producing annuals that are beneficial for a lot of uh, birds such as bobwhite quail. It also increases the amount of forage available for species like white-tailed deer. And lastly, the structure of the vegetation improves for uh, ground nesting birds such as uh, greater prairie chicken and bobwhite quail. Fire suppression, on the other hand, leads to a buildup of wildland fuels that can lead to catastrophic wildfires. Nowhere is that more critical than in the wildland urban interface. The wildland urban interface is the area where structures and other human development meet or intermingle with undeveloped lands. Follow the guidelines in this video to ensure a safe burn and one which will meet your management objectives. A prescribed fire is conducted with an appropriately trained crew and adequate equipment under a specific set of guidelines, including air temperature, wind speed, and relative humidity. Unlike controlled burns or wildfire, prescribed fire has clear goals and objectives. There are four basic objectives for fire prescriptions. Restore the health of prairies, shrublands, or forest lands. Improve grazing for cattle reduce wildland fuels, or manage wildlife habitat. Start your planning process by defining your objectives. Landowners should consider developing a conservation plan with the Natural Resources Conservation Service. The NRCS will examine the natural resources of your land and help determine the best management practices necessary to meet your objectives. Your conservation plan may prescribe fire to manage your land, much like a doctor's prescription. Fire prescriptions are specific to an ecological site and customized for each landowner. What your objectives and weather conditions are must be outlined in your burn plan. A prescribed burn plan is a plan that's uh, on file, it's a written plan that includes the area to be burned with a legal description, the number of people that are anticipated to be needed on the burn, the amount of equipment, uh, the kind of equipment that needs to be there, how the fire breaks will be prepared, and then the prescription itself, the conditions under which the burn will be conducted. It's also written evidence that landowners have acted prudently by planning their prescribed fires. Burn plans are available from the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service and the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Begin developing your burn plan by drawing a map of the area you want to burn. Your map should include roads, fire breaks, natural barriers, major topographical features, buildings, gas and oil wells or pipelines, and smoke-sensitive areas. Next, look over the prescribed fire checklist. It covers who should be notified that you intend to burn, the location of buildings and sensitive vegetation in the burn area which need to be protected, an equipment checklist, personnel requirements, clothing and personal items, landowner information, objectives of the burn, the prescription for the burn, and guidelines for a smoke management plan. And don't forget to work out a contingency plan using guidelines found in the forms. You also need to identify your fire crew and their individual responsibilities, as well as your fire boss. The fire boss is the person who's in charge of the fire. Uh, generally, he's not involved in setting the fire or doing any suppression work or laying wet lines. He's the person that's making all the decisions, monitoring the weather, making sure everything's going according to plan. 
Once completed, share the fire plan with every member of your crew. Well in advance of the burn, contact the closest rural fire department. Some departments cooperate with prescribed fires and even help conduct the burn. As the landowner or manager, you are responsible for ensuring the proper equipment and personal protective gear are available during the burn. One of the most important things in a prescribed burn is personal safety. And in that aspect, we're very interested in people using the proper clothing, in which we usually talk about Nomex clothing. Nomex is an aramid fiber produced by DuPont that's used in uh, firefighting, wildland firefighting, and uh, prescribed burning has been for years. It's very important uh, material to be used because it doesn't support combustion. Uh, we use pants, Nomex gloves, Nomex shirts or coats. We also use a protective lightweight wildland helmet with goggles and a protective shield for your neck and your face. With all this equipment, you can, you can be pretty safe on a prescribed burn. It's lightweight and uh, that's something we really want people to use. If you don't have this equipment, you can use all cotton clothing. Never wear clothing made of nylon or other synthetics. This type of clothing can shrink or even melt in the heat of a fire. Oil tanned leather gloves are something to be avoided. If you're going to use leather gloves, you need to make sure they're chrome tanned. Uh, experience in wildland fires and in some cases burnovers in wildland firefighting have shown that oil tanned gloves will shrink much like synthetic clothing and can really be a problem. So you have to make sure that you don't use oil tan gloves. Again, the best kind of glove is a Nomex glove. Anyone with hair longer than collar length should put it up before getting near the fire. As you plan a prescribed fire, make a list of the equipment needed, such as a fire weather kit, a backpack sprayer, a drip torch, a four-wheel drive vehicle with sprayer, a flapper, and a fire rake. Some gear is available for checkout from local conservation districts. Call the conservation district in your area to find out what is available. Make sure you have communication with your fire crew and with local authorities. Cellular phones are very valuable, as well as business band radios. Fire breaks are critical to the success of any prescribed fire. Effective fire breaks, whether natural or man-made, along with backfired or blackened areas, can reduce the amount of water and labor required to control the fire. So how do you know how big to make a fire break? Use the following rule of thumb for the standard fire prescription. The fire break in blackened area should be 10 times the height of the vegetation that will burn. The standard fire prescription would be air temperature of less than 60 degrees Fahrenheit, wind speed of less than 15 miles per hour, and relative humidity greater than 40 percent but less than 60 percent. If there is grass which is two feet tall, the fire break in blackened area should be 20 feet wide. This will be much wider if there are trees in the burn area. For example, if there are cedar trees 20 to 30 feet tall on the downwind side of the burn, the total should be at least 200 to 300 feet wide. Larger blackened areas will also be needed if the air temperature is higher than 60 degrees Fahrenheit or if there are volatile fuels such as sand sagebrush or eastern red cedar. There are several different types of fire breaks. Disking, dozing, mowing and plowing with either an agricultural or fire plow, as well as natural or existing fire breaks, such as streams, natural bare ground, cropland, or roads. A fire prescription is shaped by weather conditions, so getting accurate information is essential for a safe and productive burn. You should begin with a long-range forecast. It's vital to know not just the forecast in the burn area, but what may be headed your way. Check out the weather forecasts on local radio and television. 
You can also monitor three frequencies from the National Weather Service with an inexpensive weather radio, or you can check online with Oklahoma Mesonet. Monitor the forecasts beginning at least a week before the burn and continue through the day of the burn. On the day of the burn, monitor on-site conditions with an anemometer and a fire weather kit. A relatively new tool available to producers is the Oklahoma Mesonet. Well, we in Oklahoma are very fortunate to have a system like this. It's called the Oklahoma Mesonet. It's a system of currently 116 automated weather stations. It's a project between University of Oklahoma and Oklahoma State University. Information from the weather stations is available on the Internet in real time. The website provides weather data such as air temperature, humidity, wind speed, and wind direction, as well as several products dedicated to fires in Oklahoma. And here, for example, is the burning index map at 1 o'clock. It shows in these uh, red and orange areas where the areas of the highest fire danger are at this particular time in the state. We also have other maps, for example, called the ignition component, which relate to the probability of a fire starting if you toss a fire brand onto a fuel bed. We also have developed uh, products for smoke dispersion. And uh, we can access that also by going to weather and then the atmosphere dispersion model. Uh, currently, the dispersion conditions are excellent across Oklahoma. So if you were to do, for example, a prescribed fire today, the smoke would disperse very well, and uh, you shouldn't have any problems smoking out your neighbor at this particular time. And finally, we also developed a, a user-friendly forecast product called the NGM Moss 60-Hour Forecast. You can click on a site, in this case I'll do Oklahoma City, and this will give you every three hours over the next two and a half days uh, in three-hour increments what the temperatures, humidity, winds, and then we've added the dispersion condition from our smoke model uh, onto this product as well. So fire managers anticipating a prescribed fire could use such a product to see whether there'd be a window of opportunity, for example, over the next two days. When preparing for a prescribed fire, always check to see if a red flag fire alert or a burn ban has been issued. A red flag fire alert is issued during extended weather conditions, such as low humidity and high winds. When a red flag fire alert is in effect, it doesn't preclude a landowner from doing a prescribed fire. However, it does, it should alert a landowner that conditions are favorable for rapid fire spread and that uh, extreme caution needs to be taken. If conditions worsen, the governor's office may issue a ban on all outdoor burning, including prescribed fires. The easiest uh, way to find out about the burning ban is to check local media sources. Uh, the uh, 6 o'clock news, the local newspapers, they all carry whether or not there is a burning ban in, in effect. Okay, another source of information is the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry website. There's a link there to information related to the burning ban and what counties are in, involved. There are certain locations in far eastern Oklahoma where the law requires that the forestry district office be notified before any burning takes place. In the northeast section of the fire protection area, call the office in Tahlequah. In the east central area, call the office in Wilburton. And in the southeast area, call the headquarters in Broken Bow. Once you have determined the weather conditions at the burn site, you must decide where and how the fire will be set. There are six main types of firing techniques. They are head fires, which burn with the wind, back fires, which burn into the wind, strip head fires. These are head fires used to burn parallel strips of land and are used to regulate fire intensity. Flank fires. 
These fires are also set into the wind. Area or spot ignition. Several small fires are set that gradually expand until they join. And ring fire, which includes setting a back fire, flank fire on either side, and a head fire. This is the most common technique used. One of the most critical factors in using prescribed fire is managing the smoke. A sudden wind shift can send smoke sailing across roadways, causing hazardous and even deadly driving conditions. If you're burning close to a road, one or more crew members should be assigned to monitor the roadway. They should have a cell phone and radio contact with the rest of the burn crew and with local law enforcement authorities. As a precaution, people monitoring the road should be able to control traffic if smoke crosses the road. Local prescribed fire associations can also provide help with training, personnel, and equipment. A prescribed fire association is where a group of landowners get together in a specific area, they pool their resources, then they pool their labor, and assist each other in properly and safely applying prescribed fire to the landscape. To join a prescribed burn association, again, check with your local county extension or local NRCS office in your county, see if there's one already there. If there's not one, again, contact these people as well as many of your neighbors in your area and talk about forming one. For more information on conducting a prescribed burn, contact the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service, uh, USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service, uh, Samuel Roberts Noble Foundation, State Division of Forestry, or the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation.